I'm Sarat. I'm Nawal. And we're your hosts for Ramadan, Ramadan TV. TV. We're back for the second half of Ramadan program for brand new content just for you guys. Up next, we have Kahoot. Wait, wait, Nawal. We, we don't have Kahoot yet. But I want it to be Kahoot, and so do the viewers. Let's give them what they want. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, Kahoot will be at the end of the program as always. So why don't we just begin with our first program, Ramadan Talks. Hello, I'm Michael Gempel. I go to Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT for short. Uh, my major is uh, biological engineering. Uh, hobbies, I like watching YouTube videos, a lot of YouTube videos, uh, playing video games, watching anime. As for career goals, uh, I want to work at a biotech company and invent stuff to help people. I have heard of Ramadan. So in high school, uh, my school has a lot of Turkish people in it. Like for example, in my robotics team, uh, out of like eight people, I was the only person who's not Turkish on it. Uh, so I definitely had a lot of experience with Ramadan through them, even though uh, I'm not Muslim myself. Uh, oh yeah, one thing I did with my friends my Muslim friends during Ramadan was I would go to one of their houses and we would just eat a really big meal at like 2 a.m. Oh wait, no, actually it was one of, at one of our teachers' houses since we also had a lot of Turkish teachers. Uh, yeah, I just really like the, the community aspect of it where, uh, at least from my school, uh, since all the, not all, since so many students and uh, teachers were Muslim, I got to be at so many of their events. Uh, and what I know about Ramadan, so I know that it's a month where Muslim people, uh, they don't eat or drink anything during the day uh, and have to wait until after the sun sets to eat or drink. Uh, what I found really cool was how just how dedicated they were to it. Uh, for example, a lot of my Muslim friends, they played soccer uh, during most of the year, but during Ramadan, they couldn't uh, attend soccer practice because uh, to do that, that would mean that they'd be sweating a lot, and since you can't drink water, uh, they, they, they just couldn't do any, like, really uh, hard exercise like that. Uh, and I just thought that dedication was really admirable. Uh, so I was raised as a Catholic, going to Catholic school until uh, third grade, uh, and I don't identify with it now. Though I did do uh, Catholic things like uh, communion and uh, confirmation and stuff. Uh, so when I did identify as Catholic and went to a Catholic school and stuff, uh, we did a thing called Lent, where we, for every Friday during that time, we don't eat, the only meat we can eat is uh, fish. And uh, that doesn't seem like much of a sacrifice compared to just not eating at all during when the sun is up. Uh, but that, yeah, that, that is the closest. I think fasting is a really good way to be thankful for what you have. Uh, like what my Muslim friends told me was that 
uh, what they think about is how there are people all over the world who like just wish they could be eating but they can't because they can't afford food or don't have access to it. Uh, and here we are in like these countries where we do have that opportunity. So just taking a bit of time uh, during the year to uh, just be grateful for what you have and be grateful that you have the that you have the option to like choose not to eat uh, during a certain time, as opposed to uh, other people in other parts of the world who they don't have a choice, they just can't eat certain times because they don't have food. Uh, like I said before, I think that uh, being thankful is a really good uh, virtue to have. Like so many people, they spend so much time and effort focusing on the negatives of their life. Uh, and they, they become, like, really d depressed because of it. Uh, but if they... Like, I know not everyone has the same opportunities in life, but everyone has at least some things to be thankful for. And if you focus on those things rather than the bad, uh, then I feel like your life can really improve. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael, for sharing your thoughts on Ramadan. Okay, Sahab, is it time for Kahoot yet? No, no, not yet. I'll make a deal with our viewers, though. If you guys can get us to 5,000 subscribers by the end of Ramadan, we'll make Kahoot happen for one day. How about that? Guys, please make my dreams come true. Okay, Neval, but do you know a corner has 90 degrees? Never mind. Moving on to Ramadan Corner. Do you know what it is? 
Let me tell you, it's a great because it's attached to one uh, stick and it has lots of grapes on it. That's what, and this one is our, like, we, you don't have this every single day, but we sometimes have this. And it, it's like these, and it says, um, they should use the ha ha cake goodness, which means you, you, you um, received another present for doing, for fasting and going through this hard um, thing when you're young. And our surprise was, um, like it can be, it can be in different places. Like um, it can be under the couch or behind the curtains. It can be anywhere in this house. So we have the, those, and we open this every single day. So we have some decor here, and we have um, our days until e calendar -ish thing. Uh, it's actually 17 days till we have to eat. Cause that's when Ramadan ends, uh, and that's what we have here, and that's how we celebrate it. Okay, bye. Thank you, Medic, for showing us your awesome decorations. Now, I bet you didn't learn this in your history class because our history class is more elite. You guessed it, it's time for Muslim Scholars. The Chief of All Surgeons, Al-Zahrawi Al-Zahrawi was born in the city of Azahara, 8 kilometers northwest of Cordoba, Andalusia. His birth date is not known for sure, however, scholars agree that it was after 936, the year his birthplace city of Azahara was founded. He lived most of his life in Cordoba. It is also where he studied, thought, and practiced medicine and surgery until shortly before his death in about 1013, two years after the sacking of Azahara. Al-Zahrawi was a court physician to the Andalusian Caliph Al-Hakam II. He was a contemporary of Andalusian chemists such as Ibn al-Wafid, al-Majriti, and Artifius. He devoted his entire life and genius to the advancement of medicine as a whole and surgery in particular. Al-Zahrawi specialized in curing disease by cauterization. He invented several devices used during surgery, for purposes such as inspection of the interior of the urethra, applying and removing foreign bodies from the throat, the ear, and other body organs. He was also the first to illustrate the various cannulae and the first to treat a wart with an iron tube and caustic metal as a boring instrument. Al-Zahrawi's 30-volume medical encyclopedia Kitab al-Tasrif, completed in the year 1000, covered a broad range of medical topics, including surgery, medicine, orthopedics, ophthalmology, pharmacology, nutrition, dentistry, childbirth, and pathology. Al-Zahrawi stated that he chose to discuss surgery in the last volume because surgery is the highest form of medicine, and one must not practice it until he becomes well acquainted with all other branches of medicine. On Surgery and Instruments is the 30th and last volume of Kitab al-Tasrif. It is without a doubt that his most important work and the one which establishes authority in Europe for centuries to come. On Surgery and Instruments is the first illustrated surgical guide ever written. Its contents and descriptions have contributed to many technological innovations in medicine, notably which tools to use in specific surgeries. In the beginning of his book, Al-Zahrawi states that the reason for writing this treatise was the underdeveloped nature of surgery in the Islamic world. 
and the low status it was held to by the physicians at the time. Al-Zahrawi attributed the situation to a lack of anatomical knowledge and a misunderstanding of human physiology. Al-Zahrawi introduced over 200 surgical instruments, which include, among others, different kinds of scalpels, retractors, curettes, pincers, specula, and also instruments designed for his favorite techniques of cauterization and ligature. He also invented hooks with a double tip for use in surgery. Many of these instruments were never used before by any previous surgeon. Al-Zahrawi also touched upon the subject of cosmetics, and dedicated a chapter for it in his medical encyclopedia. As the treatise was translated into Latin, the cosmetic chapter was used in the West. Al-Zahrawi considered cosmetics a branch of medicine, which he called medicine of beauty. He deals with perfumes, scented aromatics, and incense. He also invented a perfume stick that was then rolled and pressed into a special mold, perhaps the earliest descendant of present-day lipsticks and solid deodorants. Donald Campbell, a historian of Arabic medicine, described al-Zahrawi as the most frequently cited surgical authority of the Middle Ages. During the 14th century, French surgeon Guy de Chaloc quoted Al-Tasrif over 200 times. Pietro Argalata described al-Zahrawi as, without a doubt, the chief of all surgeons. Al-Zahrawi's influence continued for at least five centuries, extending into the Renaissance, evidenced by Al-Tasri's frequent reference by French surgeon Jacques de la Champe. The street in Cordova where he lived is named in his honor as Cal Albuquerque. On this street, he lived in house number six, which is preserved today by the Spanish tourist board with a bronze plaque, which reads, This was the house where al Zarawi lived. I hope you guys are paying attention because the question about Al Zahrawi will definitely be on Kahoot. Up next, let's see what you guys know on What Do I Know? Do you think it is okay to cheat on a test if you don't study? Um, I don't think it's okay to cheat on a test because then you're not answering the questions on what you know, you're using other people's answers and you're basically putting their work and taking credit for it as well. I think it's not. No, because as a student we're supposed to study, we are given tasks and certain duties to finish and a test is one of those. So you cheating on a test would mean getting a score that's dishonest and you're being dishonest with yourself and your teacher and a student who studied hard and let's say got a 70 deserved it while you, if you cheat and get a 90, it's unfair and unjust to the student who studied. Are you an honest person? I think I am. Because, I mean, I don't lie, and I normally just like to say the truth. Yes, I am, because I don't lie. I usually tell the truth to everyone. Not usually, all the time. Uh, if I don't like something, I say it. I don't go around topics, or like, I don't sugarcoat things. Yeah, I don't lie. That's a lie. I try to be. What does good morals mean, and why is it important in Islam? I think it means when you're like honest and when you're like compassionate about like what you're doing and like your morals are like not negative. 
And I think it's important for Islam because you need to be like compassionate about reading the Quran and being a an,、uh, Muslim and like lying is also like not good. So you need to be an honest person. Good morals means doing the right thing at the right time and the right way. I believe. And why is it important in Islam?、Um, because it's how you present yourself. As Muslims, we're obligated to represent Islam in the best way. So it's kind of a key principle, I think. Because in Islam, we,、uh, you should be respectful, and like you should be respectful to everyone, and you should be kind. Good morals can mean anywhere from being honest, trustworthy, forgiving, kind to everyone, respectful to all living creatures, respectful to our parents, being just. It could mean all of these. Good morals are a foundation within Islam, and they are very important. When we look at the Quran or the Hadiths, we see that good morals is set as a goal. So, for us to be good humans, we need to achieve that goal that is constantly repeated. Will moral values be different between religions? I don't think it's different because when you're honest, main thing is not lying and telling the truth, and I think that goes one way. And I don't think the like it changes. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think the Abrahamic religions have the very similar moral ideas and honesty, and like those kind of things don't really differ. I think it's mostly same, but in something it can be different. No, because religions have the same moral or faith-based teachings. But I also do want to add something that's important. Even though Islam perfects our universal moral values, it doesn't matter which religion you're from. You still have to also follow these moral guidelines and values. Who are the people who have the best moral values among humans, and why? Prophet Muhammad, because he like always he's a really good Muslim. He never lies, and he helps other people as well. Prophets, because they are sent to teach us、uh, moral values. The prophet. Prophets, because they are protected and perfected by Allah to have perfect good morals. And an example would be our Prophet Muhammad, who has the perfect morals and is set as an example for all of the creation. What would a person with good moral values not do? They wouldn't lie. They wouldn't do anything that they're not supposed to do, like break the rules and you know, like have a negative mindset and treat other people badly. They would not steal. They would not gossip. They wouldn't do things that are haram. They wouldn't be kind to others. They wouldn't be respectful to older people, and they wouldn't be honest. Wouldn't lie. Wouldn't cheat. Wouldn't disrespect their parents. Wouldn't hurt any living creature in the world. Wouldn't steal. Wouldn't be unjust. How do you decide if something is morally good or not? If you don't like it, it's most probably going to be bad. But if you enjoy it, or if it's more like on the good side and you like it, then it's probably good. I think、uh, you should listen to your conscience. If you feel guilty about something, it's probably not right to do it. I think if someone does the same thing to me, would it be bad or good? Like, would I get like upset? Or would I get happy? If I get happy, I know that it's a good thing. But if I don't,、uh, I know that I know that it's a bad thing to others also. As a Muslim, I would look into my religion, like the Quran and the Hadiths, and see what they say about this situation I'm in. And I would also consciously think about what it feels right to me. If something doesn't feel right, it's not right. No, because. İyi bir şey çıktı mı sence? Evet. Bye. Çok güzel. I love Allah. Happy Ramadan. Happy Ramadan. Happy Ramadan everybody. Happy Ramadan. 
Happy Ramadan Sky Academy viewers. Those are some great responses. Okay guys, today's performance for music of the day will be me. Oh my Allah, no one wants to hear that. <laughs> Let's let Yavuz take over with this amazing with his amazing tambour skills. So stay tuned for music of the day. Hi, my name is Yavuz Kazanje. I am 15 years old. I play the Pix Tambur. Now I will play an Eastern Anatolian folk song, Fincanın Etrafı Yeşil.
Thank you, Yavuz Kazanja, for that amazing performance. Who else like that? Thank you so much. Okay, guys, if our channel gets to 7,000 subscribers by the end of Ramadan, me and Sadhat will do a singing duet for you guys. Now let's get on to Ramadan stories. Let's go. If you want to understand this world and man's spirit within the world and the nature and value of religion for men and how the world is a prison if there is no true religion and that without religion man becomes the most miserable of creatures and that it is O oh God and there is no God but God that solve this world's talisman and deliver the human spirit from darkness, then listen to and consider this comparison. Long ago, two brothers set off on a long journey. They continued on their way until the road forked. At the fork, they saw a serious-looking man and asked him, Which road is good? He told them, On the road to the right, one is compelled to comply with the law and order, but within that hardship is security and happiness. However, on the left-hand road, there is freedom and no restraint, but within its freedom lie danger and wretchedness. Now the choice is yours. After listening to this saying, I place my trust in God, the brother with a good character took the right road and conformed to the order and regulations. The other brother, who was immoral and a layabout, chased the road to the left just for the lack of restrictions. With our imaginations, we shall follow this man in a situation which was apparently easy, but in reality burdensome. Thus this man went up hill and down dale until he found himself in a desolate wilderness. He suddenly heard a terrifying sound and saw that a great lion had come out of the forest and was about to attack him. He fled. He came across a waterless well sixty yards deep and in his fear jumped into it. He fell halfway down it where his hands met a tree. He clung on it. The tree, which was growing out of the walls of the well, had two roots. Two rats, one white and one black, were attacking and gnawing through them. He looked up and saw that the lion was waiting at the top of the well like a sentry. He looked down and saw a ghastly dragon. It raised its head and drew it close to his foot thirty yards above. Its mouth was as big as the mouth of the well. Then he looked at the well's walls and saw that stinging poisonous vermin had gathered around him. He looked up at the mouth of the well and saw a fig tree, but it was not an ordinary tree. It bare the fruit of many different trees, from walnuts to pomegranates. Thus, due to his lack of thought and foolishness, the man did not understand this, this was not just some ordinary matter. These things were not here by chance, and that there were mysterious secrets concealed in these strange beings, and he did not grasp that there was someone very powerful directing them. Now, although his heart, spirit, and mind were secretly weeping and wailing at his grievous situation, his evil commanding soul pretended that it was nothing. It closed its ears to the weeping of his heart and spirit and deceiving itself started to eat the tree's fruit as though it was in a garden. But some of the fruit were poisonous and harmful. Almighty God says in a divine hadith, I am according to how my servants think of me. Thus, through his foolishness and lack of understanding, this unhappy man thought what he saw to be ordinary and the actual truth. So that is the way he was treated, and is treated, and will be treated. He neither dies so that he is saved from it, nor does he live. He is in such torment. Now we shall leave this ill-aimed man in his torment and return so that we may consider the situation of the other brother. This fortunate and intelligent person went on his way, but he suffered no distress like his brother, for due to his fine morals, he thought of good things and imagined good things. Everything was friendly and familiar to him, and he did not suffer in any difficulty and hardship like his brother, for he knew the order and followed it. I hope you guys paid attention because something about that will be on Kahoot. Now guys, I have a question for you. Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? I say chicken. What do you guys think?
And now I am so hungry and excited because today we'll be making a Turkish classic, Mansı! My name is Elifbir and my name is Nidin Sena. Today we're going to show you how to make manta. Manta is our family's favorite food. And when it comes when it comes to normal food, I don't eat it. But when it comes to manta, I eat it really quickly. So now I'm going to show you the ingredients. First, we're going to need ground beef, onion, if you have a big onion, you can use one, but if you have small onions, use two. Black pepper, basil, salt, and red pepper. The red pepper is optional. If you want it to be more budget, then you can, then you can use it. For the dough, you need two cups of water, two eggs, and as, as much flour as you need. Now, we're going to grate the onion. We're going to it up. Now we're done with the inside and we're going to put it in the refrigerator and it's going to stay inside there until we're finished with our dough. Like in the beginning we said we're going to need two eggs, so we're going to put the two eggs. So now I'm going to add three cups of flour. After your dough is ready, we're going to split it into four pieces. But before that, we have to do like this. For, with your palms, you're going to press, and then with your fingers, you're going to bring it back. Press. Back. Press back until you have like a fat thick line. Like this. Now we're going to roll it. And like since the middle is fat, we're going to do like squeeze it and bring it to the sides like that. Back. Now roll it again. While you're rolling it, you have to press it hard. Now we're going to cut it into four. All right, after you cut your um, dough into four or five pieces, we're going to try to make it into a perfect circle. So we're going to take it and we're going to bring it to the bottom. And then we're going to take the sides until the top is like this. And now we're going to take the bottom and we're going to roll it like this. It's pretty easy. Okay. After they wait for a moment, take one of the pieces out of the four pieces and put flour on the bottom and the top. Now we're going to use the madana before the oklava to roll it out. After we made it 
wide a little bit with some ads on it. Now we're going to use it a little bit to make it even wider. First we're going to do like this. And we're going to roll it up. but And then a little bit not rolled up. And then bring it in front of us. And then we're going to do, we're going to do like this. Like the step we did before. And now we're going to do like that. And now we open it. Now we turn the side. Now it's time to cut it so we can put the ground beef we had made before. All right, now we're putting in the filling. Um, you don't want it to be too big, so you have to take like little by little. Now it's time to close them. We're going to take one, one point from another. So we closed our manta and we have a pot of boiling water here and we're going to pour, pour our manta in. So our manta is boiled. When we first put it in, the boiling stopped. Now we're going to use something like this to rinse the mud. And we, if you look at it closely, you can see that it's been cooked. And voila. Alright, now we just pour the yolk. And now we're going to put the yolk. Wait for the manta to cool down because you don't want to burn yourself. And don't blow on it either because our prophet, peace be upon him, said not to blow on your food. So this is so good. Happy Ramadan! Sheesh, that manta looks so fire. Thank you so much, Elif and Nilgun. Now it's time for a quote of the day. Let's go. Hal means gentleness or mildness. It's a word to describe a person who is peaceful, tempered, and forgiving. It requires patience and tolerance in the face of unpleasant situations, keeping one's cool when provoked, and remaining dignified, serious, and calm in response to distressing or unkind treatment. Halim is one of the char characteristics that pleases Allah the most. Our Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, both before and during his prophethood, was the gentlest of people, and he carried his quality throughout his life. God himself protected the Prophet from ever losing his Halim, and was pleased with the Prophet because of it. Allah Almighty spoke of the helm of the Prophet in the Quran as, It was by a mercy from God that at the time of the setback, you, O Messenger, were lenient with your followers. Had you been harsh and hard-hearted, they would surely have scattered away from you. Abu Huraira reported, The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever is kind, friendly, and easygoing, 
Allah will forbid him from entering hellfire. Han Su Yin, Chinese born author and physician, says there is nothing stronger in this world than gentleness. Okay guys, today we'll be going to a country where we've been before multiple times this program. Can you guess where it is? We'll be going to Indonesia. Wow, we've been there so many times, it's like I've already visited the country. Okay guys, stay tuned for Ramadan Along the World. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Amadeo Kisan Chandra, but you can just call me Mades. I live in Depok, Indonesia. It's near the capital city of Jakarta. I'm 15 years old and I'm in grade 10 in my school, Karisma Bangsa. Ramadan is a special month for every part of Indonesia. In this special month, we used to do many iconic activities. And in this video, I will tell you some of that iconic activity that we used to do before pandemic. Okay, let's start the video. Number one, Taraweh. In Indonesia, people usually do Taraweh together in a mosque. Taraweh is a sunnah prayer done after Isha prayer. This prayer is only available in the holy month of Ramadan. By doing it together in a mosque, it will be less likely to feel sleepy and it will be more enthusiastic to do it. Number two, waking people up for sahur. Very early in the morning, some people, usually teenagers, they wake up early to wake other people for sahur. They usually walk around the village while banging some percussion and shouting the word sahur. This is the example of the activity. <laughs> Number 3. Ngabuburit Ngabuburit is a very unique Indonesian tradition. In this activity, people wait for the iftar time, uh, usually by buying some food or walking around. Number 4. Iftar After fasting during the day, the sun we are waiting for is the Azan Maghrib. And after that, we eat together, usually inside a mosque. And after eating, we do Maghrib prayer together. Number five, playing firecracker. Playing firecracker is usually done during the celebration of New Year around the world. However, in Indonesia, we also do that activity during the month of Ramadan. After Tarawih, some kids are setting up the firecrackers and many people are watching them. However, this activity is now forbidden in some areas. Number six, Moody. One of the main activity during the Ramadan month is mudik or homecoming. Homecoming itself is returning to your hometown to meet your relatives. By carrying out this activity, we can celebrate the Hindu victory together with our relatives and share the happiness. Number seven, itikaf. During the last ten days of Ramadan, there is to be itikaf. Itikaf is isolating ourselves in a masjid with the intention of worshiping Allah and hope to meet Ayatul Qadr, which is full of blessing. Number eight, last but not least, takbiran. During the Idul Fitri Eve, we used to march around the village while seeing takbir filled with the sound of beduk, a kind of percussion. We also hold some torches to light up the village. Those are some activity that we used to do in the Holy Ramadan month. We all hope that this pandemic will end soon so we can do those activities again and we can gather together again. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Stay safe, stay healthy, 
dan Ramadan Mubarak. Sampai jumpa lagi. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for joining us from Indonesia. Okay, guys, be prepared to write down below what you're grateful for today. Not yesterday, not the day before, specifically for today. And now, seeking gratitude. I'm thankful for my pet hamster. I'm grateful for being at the Aviat house. How do you seek gratitude? Please send your photos and videos to seeking gratitude at skyacademynj.org. Now let's read some of your comments. Tulia says, I'm grateful for food and my family. Faisal said, Sky Academy, Kahoot, food, water, and iftar. NRN says, I'm grateful for those who make this program. Thank you so much. And for the last comment, we have, is that it for the comments? Okay, then, uh, oh, we do have it. Garlic TV says, I'm grateful for the Monta recipe. Oh my God, me too. That made me so hungry. Now let's move on to Surah of the Day. Today we'll be listening to the recitation and meaning of Surah Ikhlas. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. Say, He is Allah who is one. Allah, the eternal refuge. He neither begets to be the father of, nor is born, nor is there to him any equivalent. Thank you for the beautiful recitation as well as the translation. Guys, it's that time again, a dua, this time with our brother, Mele Yilmaz. Now, Bismillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, O Allah, the sustainer of mankind, give our sisters and brothers patience with all their sicknesses, especially those in severe pain. Ease their recovery processes and let their sicknesses be a way of, for their sins to be forgiven. The satisfier of needs. Help all the family members of the sick to cope with this very hard test. Take away the sorrow in their hearts and grant them peace and patience. Please do not test us or any of our loved ones with sicknesses that have no cure. O oh Allah, we ask you for health, restraint, trustworthiness, good character, and contentment with your ruling. Grant all of us a long and healthy life for you are the giver of life. I mean, thank you for the dua, Amelia. Okay, Sarhat, I think it's time for Kahoot now. You guessed it, it's time for Kahoot. While we wait for the Kahoot, why don't you guys hit that subscribe button and the like button if you still haven't. Okay, Bilal, the floor is yours. 
All right, the code is 9479163. We'll begin in two minutes. begin in a minute but before we begin just a reminder you can only be in top five two times during the month of Ramadan and we'll also have two lucky winners win on top of the first second third fourth and fifth places but also while we're waiting just a reminder, we're only f less than 40, fewer than 40 subscribers away from hitting 4.5 thousand. So go share the link to the video and let's hit that number. These bots are making me die. They're killing me. All right, I think we're ready. Let's start. First question. Has Zahrawi invented what? Several medical devices. Wow, 226 of you got that correct. Sweet. Let's move on to the second question. Before we do, I'll give you those lucky numbers. Those lucky numbers are 220 and 140. So if you're 220th or 140th, you'll also win a prize. Luki in first place, Nura in second, Yunus in third, Bahad in fourth, and the Chetan family in fifth place with 968. Actually, they're tied fourth and fifth place. Nice. Second question, multi-select question. Hilm is a word to describe a person who is blank, blank and forgiving. is a word to describe a person who is peaceful, tempered, and forgiving. Not a lot of people listened that closely, did they? Oh, scoreboard changes. Imposter in first place, Beza Jihei in second, Tara in third, Yunus in fourth, Samra in fifth place. Let's continue. Third question, 2,000 point question. Verse of the day. It was a mercy from God that you, O oh messenger, finish the quote. a mercy from God that you, O oh messenger, were lenient with your followers. 
86 of you, is that correct? Yeah, that's not a majority. Imposter in first place, Beza in second, who also has an answer streak of three. Murat in third place, Yunus in fourth, Tara in fifth place. Let's see who's going to win today. Fourth question, true or false, Helm is one of the characteristics that please the law the most. Is one of the characteristics that pleases Allah the most. Give me the 32 of you got that correct. Correct. Tara now in fourth place, Yunus in fifth. But besides that, same scoreboard. Let's continue. Who reported this hadith? Whoever is kind, friendly, and easygoing, Allah will forbid him from entering hellfire. <laughs> That's correct. Abu Herrera narrated this, reported the Hadith at least. 128, you got that correct. Ilyas in first place, Ahmed in second, Beza in third, Murat in fourth, Fair Yahad, Fair Yahad, I don't even know, he's in fifth place. Let's continue. Quote of the day, there is nothing stronger in the world than blank. <laughs> Stronger in the world than gentleness. Not a lot of you. A lot of you paid attention today, did you guys? Murat now in first place. Ilyas in second. Beza in third. Mehmet in fourth. And B J K in fifth place. Seven thousand two hundred seventy-nine point with the uh, seven point difference. The fourth. Okay. Seventh question. What was on the menu today? That takes a lot of talent, a lot of patience, a lot of time. I could never. Murat in first, st still. Yes, in second, Beza in third. BJK now in fourth. Mehmet in fifth place. Six point difference. Okay, nice. Eighth question. A 2,000 point question. A Zahrawi considered blank a branch of medicine. <laughs> You got that correct. These questions, I guess, are really difficult, which they shouldn't be. Ilyas in first place now, Mehmed in second, Bitter in third, Elif in fourth, and Bunat in fifth place. 
Let's see who's going to win today. Final question, true or false? Sir of the day, Allah is one who is not a father nor is born. One and does not give birth nor is born. Let's see who won. But before we do, don't forget if you're first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and 220th and 140th, you also win a prize. Let's see who's third. Third place goes to Victory. Second place goes to Mehmet. And first place goes to Diaz. Congrats. Let's see who's fourth and fifth place. It is in event. Same screenshots at Kahoot at SkyAcademyNJ.org to claim your prize. Congratulations to all our winners. Wow, today's program was sure was a noodle doodle, right, Side Hut? Oh, definitely. I had a lot of fun today. I hope you guys did too. Smash that like button if you liked today's episode because I sure did. And hit subscribe from everybody's YouTube account and from your household so we can reach 5K subs by the end of this Ramadan. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Everybody have a great iftar. See you tomorrow.